Hello everyone. Welcome to our channel. The Navy Guy. We hope everyone is doing well during this lockdown. We got many requests regarding videos on marine control systems. It is a very vast topic which cannot be covered in a single video. Before getting started, do hit that subscribe button. So in this video we will understand the basics of a control system. We will talk about what is a control system? What is pneumatic ship control system? What is electrical ship control system? What is open loop control system? What is closed loop control system? What is control signals and how to relate them with instrument variables? Let's first understand what is a control system. A control system is an interconnection of various components or elements forming a system and thereby provides the desired system response. A control system can control its output to a particular value or perform a sequence of events or perform an event if the specified conditions are satisfied with respect to the input given. The main aim of developing control system is to run the system on its own that is without human interference. For example the viscosity control of fuel on board. A set value is defined by a watchkeeper, after this, the viscosity controller will control this with its own control system. It will take the feed that is present viscosity of fuel and compares with the set value. On the basis of this difference, the corrective action will be taken by the system. The main aim of a control system is to provide decision-making capability to the system. This will not only increase the efficiency of the system but also speed up the process. A ship control system is always involved in complexity with all systems such as main engine maneuvering system which involves pneumatic, electrical system. Earlier pneumatic control lines run from bridge to the main engine for start, stop and speed control and from the main engine to bridge as a feedback system. But with advancement in electrical sensors and controllers, most of them have been replaced by the electrical system. One of the means of communication from the bridge to the engine room is telegraph, which is electrically connected with each other with solenoid valves for each movement. And all these commands are connected to main engine speed control system with help of pneumatic and electrical signals. Let's first talk about pneumatic ship control system. In this system, air pressure or airflow is used as a measuring unit. And the corrective command also involves air pressure. For example, auto backwash filters where the pressure difference of incoming and outgoing oil is measured in term of air pressure. When air pressure will increase because of filter getting choked and at a defined value filter will back flush using the same oil passing through. Some advantages of pneumatic ship control system are. This is not affected by ship's power supply variations for short term. It requires a low cost of installation. No heat generated and hence no risk of fire. The simplicity of the components and no complex structure. Actuators are cheaper and accurate than electric systems. It involves only simple control air piping system. Some disadvantages of pneumatic ship control system are. It requires at least an air compressor and associated air systems. The copper piping is vulnerable to damage very easily. A clean, dry and oil-free supply of good quality air is essential for satisfactory operation of the system. Good quality air requires dryers, filters with drains, etc. which increases maintenance. It may have transmission lags in large systems. The pipe couplings can give rise to leaks in certain ambient conditions. It has some potential noise. Now let's talk about electrical ship control system. It involves a complex system of cables and controller. The widely used controller in PID control. It is the most accurate controller in the industry. It has been used in many systems. For example, boiler level controller, turbine ship control etc. One of the latest development includes HART control, in which all controllers will be wireless and system setting is remotely controlled. Some advantages of electrical ship control system are. For this system, no air compressor and associated machinery required. It is having high efficiency since there are no leakages. It is very little affected by normal temperature variations. This system is having a very accurate and quick response. It involves electric cables, which are cheap and easy to lay. In this system, no entrainment or contamination in the control medium. Some disadvantages of electrical ship control system are. The system requires an uninterrupted power supply with no voltage fluctuations. This involves complex networks. It requires standby batteries in case of power failure. If there is a risk of fire due to overheating. Expensive intrinsically safe, explosion proof equipment may be required. Difficult maintenance and test kit requirements. Moisture may cause damage to the system. 
the damage readily occurs in the event of a fire. There are two types of control systems open loop control system and closed loop control system. Let's talk about open loop control system first. Open loop control can be defined as any control function in which the end result of the process is not identified or monitored by the control element. There is, however, no sensor or measuring element, situated inside of the feedback loop. The control element cannot, therefore, detect what is happening within the process as there is no information feedback. An example of open loop system is power supply from generators to purifier motor. There is no feedback from motor back to the generator. But what is feedback? If either the output or some part of the output is returned to the input side and utilized as part of the system input, then it is known as feedback. Feedback plays an important role in order to improve the performance of the control systems. It is of two types. Positive feedback and negative feedback. Positive feedback has the property that signals tend to reinforce themselves, and grow larger. The noise from the system is added back to the input, and that in turn produces more noise. Whereas in negative feedback, when we subtract the value of the output from the value of the input, we get a value called the error signal. The error signal shows us how far off our output is from our desired input. The change in energy flow will therefore continue, without any further control, until the operating signal is removed. Let's talk about closed loop control system now. In a closed loop control system, a sensing or measuring element is situated inside feedback loop. The measuring element detects what is happening within the process and produces a feedback signal to a comparator which is the actual value of the process. The comparator compares the actual condition or value of the process with the desired condition or value of the process and, if the two are not the same, produces an error signal. The error signal is then used by the control element to change, via the correcting element, the energy flow into or out of the process. Thus a control sequence can be established that continuously attempts to eliminate any deviation of the actual value from the desired value of the process. This system is potentially stable and very accurate. An example of closed feed control system is autopilot system on ships. Now we will talk about control signals. In the field of instrumentation, analog electronic signals and pneumatic signals are typically used for control purposes to actuate the final control element in a control loop which is usually a control valve. An analog electronic signal is a voltage or current whose magnitude represents some physical measurement or control quantity. The most popular form of signal transmission used in modern industrial instrumentation systems is the 4 to 20 mA DC standards. This is an analog signal standard, meaning that the electric current is used to proportionately represent measurements or control signals. Typically, a 4 mA current value represents 0% of scale, a 20 mA current value represents 100% of scale, and any current value in between 4 and 20 mA represents a commensurate percentage in between 0% and 100%. In pneumatic systems, a standard signal range of 3 to 15 psi, pounds per inch 2, is used. Here, a varying air pressure signal represents some process measurement in an analog fashion. Typically, a 3 psi pressure value represents 0% of scale, a 15 psi pressure value represents 100% of scale, and any pressure value in between 3 and 15 psi represents a commensurate percentage in between 0% and 100%. It is worthy of note to state here that pneumatic signals are commonly used in process industries for safety especially when there is a risk of fire or explosion. Now let's understand how to relate 4 to 20 mA signals to instrument variables. Calculating the equivalent mA value for any given percentage of signal range is quite easy. Given the linear relationship between signal percentage and milliamps, the equation takes the form of the standard slope intercept line equation C is equals to M into P plus B. Here, C is the equivalent current in milliamps, P is the desired percentage of signal, M is the span of the 4 to 20 milliamp range usually taken as 16 milliamp, and B is the offset value, or 4 milliamp. Current is equal to 16 milliamp into P divided by 100% plus 4 milliamp, P is equal to percentage range of signal. This equation form is identical to the one used to calculate pneumatic instrument signal pressures, the 3 to 15 psi standard. Pressure is equal to 12 psi into P divided by 100% plus 3 psi. The same mathematical relationship holds for any linear measurement range. Given a percentage of range P, the measured variable is equal to 
span into P divided 100% plus LRV. Let's take a practical example of calculations between milliamp current values and process variable values. An electronic temperature transmitter is ranged between 40 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit and has a 4 to 20 milliamp output signal. Calculate the current output by this transmitter if the measured temperature is 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's solve the given problem. First, we convert the temperature value of 60 degrees into a percentage of range based on the knowledge of the temperature range span that is. 140 degrees minus 40 degrees is equal to 100 degrees and lower range value is equal to 40 degrees. We may do so by manipulating the general formula. Measured variable is equal to span into P divided by 100% plus LRV. Measured variable minus LRV is equal to span into P divided by 100%. Therefore, P is equal to, measured variable minus LRV whole divide by span, whole into 100%. Which is equal to, 60 minus 40 whole divided by 100, whole into 100% and is equal to 20%. Next. We take this percentage value and translate it into a 4 to 20 milliamp current value using the formula. Current is equal to 16 milliamp into P divided by 100% plus 4 milliamp which is equal to 16 milliamp into 20% divided by 100% plus 4 milliamp and is equal to 7.2 milliamp. Therefore, the transmitter should output a process value signal of 7.2 milliamps at a temperature of 60 degree Fahrenheit. So that's all for today. In the next video we will talk about signal transmitting instruments. In case of any query or suggestion, leave them in the comment section below. Do hit the like and subscribe button for more such videos.